If you are here, you probably already know about the CC Prime. If you don't, please check the video I have created before, I leave the link in the description. But if you know about this project, you probably already know that you can share the space and earn some money by sharing the space on your hard drives. So in this video, I'm gonna tell you how to configure your Windows machine to share the space on CC Prime. Hello everyone, my name is Andrew and today we are going to talk how to configure CC Prime on your Windows machine to share the space. Just to let you know, there are basically a couple of options to share the space for the CC Prime. Option one is to buy their miner, which you will have to wait a little bit because as quite many other miners, we have some delays and you can pre-order it and wait a little bit. Another option is to configure everything on your machine and share the space. And here are two options as well. One is like Raspberry Pi, uh, buy a small uh, computer, we can call it like him, like, like that, because Raspberry Pi is really like a small computer. Or you can configure on your Windows or Linux machines. So in my case, I'm using Windows machine, Windows computer, and I'm gonna show you how to configure CC Prime that it would work on your Windows machine. So let's do this. So step number one, or first thing you have to do, you have to download the client. You can do that from CC Prime website. Here are two options. One is UI, you can download for Windows, Mac, OS, or Linux. And another one is command line, Windows, Mac, or Linux. Of course, you would probably want to download UI, click, click, double click, install, and that's all. But unfortunately, UI is not fully functioning at the moment. That's why we will have to download command line and configure everything through the command line. But fear not. Keep watching and you'll see it's not that hard when you know what to do. Windows, Mac OS, Linux. Let's press on Windows. We have a file to download. Click OK. And once the file downloaded, open it. We have another folder inside and some contents in here. So basically we have to extract this soldier and these files and paste them in our server where we will share the space. So next let's open command line, press start. And if you don't have a command line as your favorite type CMD on the keyboard. In my case, I will run it as the administrator and we will have a black window. But like I said, fair not, it's not that an issue. And now as you can see, my files are on drive E. So I have to switch to drive E because default is drive C. Type letter E and as you can see, from letter C it switches to letter E. Next let's go to a folder we allocated. So type CD and the location where our extracted files are. And here we go. Now in here you should note that if you are doing everything, installing, configur configuring everything on your drive C, it should have enough space. Because if you'll run out of the space, for example Windows update or something else, uh, your contracts, uh, I think they will be declined and or something else will stop. Well, it basically stopped working and you will not earn the money. So keep that in mind. And if you're configuring everything on drive C, letter C where your Windows is located, make sure it has at least one gigabytes of free space at all the times. In my case, I have a small, uh, not much space left on my drive C. So I'm going to configure it configure everything on another hard drive, drive E in this case. So I have to type some additional commands first, but everything would be configured on drive E. Basically what I have to do, I have to run the SPD file. I have to type minus D, it means directory, E meta minus M and GCTVD. Once typed, CC Prime Diamond will start. It will load SPD and you will see that it's loading six stages. And as you can see in my meta folder, some files were created once I started this command. A couple of minutes has passed and we can see that finished full startup and it shows how many seconds it took. It depends on your machine, but it take less, it might take 
more time it depends on your machine in this case it took 1368 seconds which is 22 minutes but in some cases i think it took even longer or much less like a couple of minutes so everything depends on your computer but be patient once you press once you start that program leave everything to sit don't close it don't panic just leave it for for some time and continue once you get the message that finish full startup that line once you see that line that means everything is finished and you can continue with our procedures great so now once we have it we have to open command line another command line in this case i think it's not necessary to open as administrator just start cmd and you will get it now we have letter c so let's switch to letter e as before because we will have to start the other file from this folder so we have to go to this folder again and now we have to start spc we will get a message that it's synced so this is kind of like the basic information from cc prime application but the most important is that it's synced so if it's not synced once you start it you have to wait a little bit until it's fully synced only when you should continue with our procedures type spc wallet in it that means initiate and once you type that you will get your 12 word of a secret phrase yes these are the words that you should type on the paper save them and keep them as safe as possible because these words will, get, will help you to recover your wallet in case something happens. So in my case, in this tutorial, I'm not showing these 12 words I got, but once you type SPC wallet in it, you will get those 12 words. And that means you will have to type a password. And that means that your wallet was created. Type SPC wallet unlock. And right away, you will see the status for the wallet that it is unlocked. Oh, and by the way, once it asks to type a password to initiate after you initiate the wallet, it will not be shown on the screen when you will type a password. So please keep, keep that in mind that you might like think what's going on, you are typing the password or you control V, paste it and nothing is happening. It's happening. The password is there. It's just not being showed on the screen. And unfortunately, I don't know how to make that it would appear on the screen. So just keep know that once you type a password, it will be entered, just it will not be showed on the screen. Once you have it, once your wallet is unlocked, type SPC wallet address and you will get the address for your wallet. This means that you can send your SPC coins to this wallet so you can select it you can copy and you can use it to transfer the coins now you might ask hey wait a moment i want to share the space why the hell i need the wallet okay maybe the wallet is okay you'll get the money the coins for the wallet but why the hell i should transfer the coins to the wallet before i start sharing my space and that's a very logical answer you need that for the collateral. So basically, once you start sharing the space, you have to add a little bit of your own coins, your collateral, to make sure that everything will be okay. If, it's, if something is not okay, for example, your, something happens to the files that are on your computer, on your hard disk, or you are not available all the time, okay, 95% uptime, should be around 95%. So if the uptime is lower, of course, clients will not be happy about that. In those cases, you will or might lose your collateral. So that's why you need the wallet, you need the address. And of course, you'll have to send a little bit of the coins to the address before starting sharing your space. But that's a little bit later on. Let's continue with the steps we are doing now. So now, if you type SPC wallet, you will get the information about it and about the coins you have in your wallet. Great, our wallet is set up and we can set up another things, another steps. So now, in this case, it's really important to set up 
a port forward because you will need it that you could accept the contracts. There are three ports that should be forwarded. To forward the ports, you should have a static IP on your network. That might look like a tricky thing, but fear not. Let's continue and I will show you how to do that. We have to start another CMD window. So press start, type CMD or choose command prompt from your favorites. And in this case, let's type ipconfig slash all and we will get the information about your network device like IP addresses and everything else. But we don't need all the information in here. We need just some specific information from here, from this huge table. So what we need? We need a subnet mask when we will need default gateway and in the end we will need DNS servers as well. So you can see DNS servers and below there are some numbers. So these are the DNS servers your machine uses and you will need them. Let's press start, let's go to control panel and let's go to network and sharing center. Press on change adapter settings and you will get network connections window. And here we can see the Ethernet network adapter. There might be one more than one in your case, but in my case I have only one adapter, only one network card. So press right mouse button and select properties. Now let's select Internet Protocol TCP IP version 4 and press properties. In most cases you will see the empty fields in here like I see. If you have something written in here it might be that it's already set up. If not, then it means you have to make the configuration. Select use the following IP address. In IP address line type or copy the IP address you have copied before. Subnet mask is 255.255.255.0 and default gateway as well. As for DNS servers, let's copy the information. So copy line 1 for the preferred DNS server and line 2 for alternate DNS server. Press OK, save and IP settings are configured. Great, so once we have IP settings set up, we can continue with our router configuration for the well, forward forwarding for our router configuration for port forwarding. Uh, this is important. These steps that I just did is important to have a static IP set up on your machine because port forward needs that. Now for the router configuration, I have a timestamps in my video so you can check them because I have D link router and you may have a totally different one. So I'm gonna show you how to do that with the D-Link router, but if you have a different router, you might need to have it to take a different steps. So you might need to check on some manuals or internet or some other information how to do a port forward for a particular router. You can check on any router or like gain port forward or anything like that because it's it's like the same port forward it's not the specific for the cc prime it's like like quite quite a thing that many people does when we need for some games or from for something else so let's jump to my router configuration screen you can usually access your router by typing 192. 168 and when it depends on the router in my case it's dot zero dot one but it may be dot zero dot two or dot one dot zero dot one dot two. These are the most common, most popular uh, extensions for the IP addresses. But like I said, you should check on the manual of your router what you have or you can check on YouTube because usually there are plenty of videos right now and most likely you will find your router how to configure do the port forward for your router as well. So now let's jump to my router configuration screen on my browser and let's set it up. So like I said, it's possible to access my router by typing 192.168.0.1. You will get the screen to enter your admin, admin password. If you don't remember the password to access your router, and if no of your password fits or default password does not fit as well, you will have to reset your router. To do that, check for the small little hole 
it's yeah and usually it's written reset press it with some 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 needle keep it hold it for a couple of seconds like 10 or 15 sometimes you will see all the lights are shining like a christmas lights and your router will reset once it's reset you can type the default password and of course then change it to another one and access your router settings so now let's go to firewall and virtual servers let's press add and type some kind of a name in my case i will call it cc prime as for the protocol i will leave it tcp private ip select or type the one that's on your machine and for the ports to open you can find that information on cc prime documentation page and the ports are 4282 4283 and 4285 you can see that this information is here and basically you need these ports so we have two fields one is private port start and another one is private port end so in the start i will type 42a2 and then 4285 now below type the public port start and public port end and once you type these ports press apply press ok and you will get a window that cc prime port forward is set up and that's basically all when you know what to do and how to do it's really simple to do this if you don't then it might feel like oh man how to do this it's, it takes a lot of time i don't know where to press especially if you're logging to your router for the first time so yeah that's why i really recommend you to check for the manual if you you have a different router than, than mine just look for a manual and once you see how to do it it's really simple to do that now let's get back to our server and let's set let's set up a shortcut for our command line command prompt that we would not need to time to type cc prime.exe go to the location and so on we would just need to type scp and the program would start automatically so that's really convenient especially if you might need to type it or to close and open command prompt or your computer starts or something like that so that you would not go to cd folder file folder and type everything again so just a couple of steps and we will have a shortcut press start and type environment and in the search results you should see the option edit system environmental variables it's in the control panel or you can search in the control panel itself you should see this option so let's press on it advanced might be selected right away or if not you should select the advanced tab and press on environmental variables button let's select path and let's select edit you can see that there are some already well it's actually default on in my case and if you have created something else before you, you will see more lines but in my case i haven't created anything on this server this computer before so i have only one default line so now let's press new and let's press browse and let's go to a folder where our cc prime files are located so in my case it's drive e let's select the drive with letter e and let's select cc prime folder where the folders the files are located here you can see e cc prime and here is spc.exe and it's spd.exe executable files in here yeah we side to here so basically we need this folder we need quick shortcut access to these folders so let's select this folder and let's press ok press ok again ok again and the shortcut will be added let's test it out let's start a new command line window let's just press spc and you will get the basic information and as you can see you don't need to type to go to that folder or anything like that as you can see c users uh, my user login and spc and that is really convenient because like i said if you close this window or your machine restarts or something like that you will not need to go to that folder and type all the change the location and so on and so on you'll just type spc or spd and you will get 
those files executed once you price, once you just type those letters. Really, really convenient. Talking about PC Restart, it's a good idea to create an automatic startup for your application. So to do that, just start some kind of Notepad application. In my case, I'm going to use a simple Notepad, but you can use Notepad++ or something like that. And type this command, set PC Prime wallet password, then in here type your wallet password, location where the file spd.exe is located. So mine is here, cc prime spd.exe. And then the folder where your, if it's different of course, where your other SPC files are located. So in my case, I have cc prime where all the installation run files are located. And then I have another meta file where all other data is located. So basically you have to enter these locations. If your this kind of meta location is the same, then it's not necessary to type this command, this part, the meta. Let's save this file, save as, select all files. Let's call it SC Prime Startup. Let's change the extension to that. This is Windows extension and Windows will be able to start this file automatically. Press save, we check in here, we can see the file was created and the extension of the file is different. Now let's go to task scheduler. You can type task and you should be able to see task scheduler. And in this case, let's run it as administrator. Tasks, we have some default tasks already created and let's create a task. Let's call it CC Prime Startup. You can type something in the description if you want to, but it's not necessary. Now, this is quite important option. You should select that it should be start whenever user logged in or not, because if your computer starts, for example, after a Windows update or something like that, we want that it would start. And let's select run with highest privileges. Triggers. Press new and select at startup. Press ok. Actions. Now for the actions also press new. Start the program. Yes. Browse. Select the bad file we have just created. Ok. Yes. Looks fine. Conditions. Let's uncheck stop if a computer switches to battery power and this one as well. Let's go to settings. Allow task to be run on demand. Let's uncheck this because if you want that to start the application, we can just start it by ourselves. We don't want that it would be started through the application. Yes, let's stop if it runs longer than three days. And let's leave this check mark as well. If the running task does not end when requested, force it to stop. Great, looks like everything is set up. Press OK. Now type your computer administrator password and new task is created. Just in case you can double check the details in here. Once the task is selected, you can see everything you have set up. And now the application will start automatically once your computer restarts. Now let's prepare some space on your hard disks. If you already have like new drives or like half used, everything will be okay. In my case, I'm gonna share like two gigabytes of the space on my fully loaded drive because I have Chia mining on this server as well. So it's taking all the space, but yeah, I'm gonna allocate some space for the, for this SC Prime project. So I have deleted some Chia files in one of my drives and I have two terabytes of free space in here. Now it's recommended to create the folders and divide your space into smaller pockets so that it would be like a couple of folders with two terabytes of space instead of one huge like five or ten terabytes allocated in, in one folder. Let's create a new folder and let's call it that we could understand what kind of folder this is. So I'll just call it something simple like cc t1 2 terabytes. Now, for the faster performance, we should compress the content in this folder. Press right mouse button, select properties, advanced, select the check mark near the compressed contents to save disk space and press OK. Press OK again. It should not take long and you will see right away the icon is slightly different on this folder. This is very important because I read some information that if you will not do this compress option, it might take hour or two and so on for the files later on to be added for the CC Prime's CC Prime network that people could add use the space. So in my case, you will see 
it will be much much quicker okay let's open command prompt window again let's type spc host folder add and the location of your folder oh and by the way i just made a mistake that i called i type the name of the folder with the gaps so if you type a folder name with the gaps into the command prompt it will think that it's a different command and it will not understand you so uh, in my case i'll just uh, rename the folder changing the gaps with underscore so that it would be like a one word uh, because like i said a command prompt will not understand you in other way so when you're creating the folder please keep that in mind and well create it incorrect way right away yeah so as we can see now it looks like dcc t1 to terabytes and i will not press enter because i know that command prompt will not understand what the hell is going on so let's go to our windows commander let's press on the folder name and let's rename it in computer friendly name that it would be with underscores not with the gaps great so now let's change that in our command prompt line window as you can see now the name is like the one word with underscores and let's type how many gigabytes we want to share yes you should type the space you want to share in gigabytes not terabytes not everything like that because well yeah and you should remember that one terabyte is 1024 gigabytes so if you want to share all full one or two terabytes so you should type not just 1000 or 2000 gigabytes but you should type it in computer language computer counting 1024 gigabytes oh and looks like i just made a mistake again you should not leave any gaps after the gigabytes just type the space the digits for the space and then without any gaps and we can see that folder was added really quickly and new files were created in this folder so looks like a success and like i said if you would not uh, compress the folder it probably would take much longer time now it took just i don't know half a minute couple of seconds it was really really quick process so keep that in mind that you should compress the folder you are adding for the cc prime and the process will be much much faster yeah, if you go back to our drive to our computer we can see the drive is fully used again those two terabytes are being added in this folder and these files like one file takes just a couple of kilobytes and another file size is two terabytes once we have some space allocated for our in our hard disk for the file sharing we have to enter the settings and make it public but before doing that there is one good option that i really recommend you if you don't have a static ip address i don't have a static ip address and that's why i'm gonna set up um, a ip address not ip address actually i'm gonna set up the url that would check if my ip has changed and that the cc prime servers would connect not to my ip but to that url and that url would change that url would remain the same but ip address would change automatically in the settings so in my case i'm going to use duck dns service and you can use it for free as well i'm just gonna type some kind of url in this case i'm gonna type data friendly and it will be data friendly dot .org. so just type something in the domain name click add domain and if it's not taken you will see a message that success domain was added now we have to install some application on our computer that it could keep track of our ip address if it's changed or if it not so as we can see we have a couple of operating systems or even routers you can install it on your router as well in this case i'm gonna select windows and user interface because why not user interface is usually user friendly and you don't need to type many things or anything like that so let's select the domain we have created we can have more than one actually and we will get the instructions what to do next and it's really detailed so we can see that step one download and install the software and here is the link to do that 
So let's just download the application. Press on the link you have in this description. You will be directed to ATX software DuckDNS update client. And here we have the option Windows update client for DuckDNS.org. Let's go a little bit below. We will have the files we can download. And in my case, I'm gonna select exe file so that I could install it right away. Let's open the file. Yes, we want to run it. We will have a really nice setup window. Press next. Select the location. If the default is okay, leave it. If not, select the other one, a different one. Select start menu folder. Default usually is quite okay. And if you want, you can create a desktop icon. Icon. Next you will see everything you have selected and click install. It should not take long, just a couple of seconds and it should be installed. Once installed you should see that application was installed in the start menu. And if something is wrong you will get the message. So in my case I can see that I don't have a Java runtime environment that this application is needed. So in my case there is one more additional step is to install Java runtime application. Well, if you have, because this is a, like a new, quite a new server and I did not need it before, so that's why it's not here. But if you have some server properly set up, properly installed all the applications for some kind of uh, configuration or anything like that, most likely you will have this Java runtime environment application already installed. But if not, I, I will not go through a process, you just need to go to Java website, click download, install, install, next, next, and that's all. So I will not go through that, but basically if you get some message like this uh, on your screen, that means you have to install it and then everything will be just fine. So once Java application is installed and once you run the application again, you will see the, no the notification, the icon on the right start menu side. And if you press, we can see that we have some kind of options like duck dinner settings for subdate, my your IP address by pressing what is my IP address about or exit so please don't exit and if you just installed this application you have to paste the token in the token window and of course the domain because otherwise obviously it will not work because it will not know where to transfer your IP address. So this is quite important that you would enter your domain and your token from the instruction on the website. So you will see this information on the configuration window, domain and the token. So just copy it and just paste it in the configuration window. It's really convenient that everything is written on the same instruction page. So you don't have to search where to find this information. Once typed press OK, you will see a message saying that DuckDNS settings successfully validated and saved. Press OK. If you hover your mouse over the icon, you will see the version, your IP address, if it changed or not, and then it will be updated next time. So in my case, it's refreshing every five minutes. That means if the IP changes in around five minutes time period, the application will update it. I hope you are still with me. Yes, it is a longer video than usually, but it's quite a mini it has, there are quite many steps for a configuration and well, I want to show you as much as possible so that it would be an easy process for you to configure, configure everything up. So that's why it's taking long, but yeah, I don't want to skip these steps so that you would know how to configure. And like I said, there are some stamp, timestamps. You can skip to any part you need, you want, if something is unclear in your configuration process. So we are almost done. Next topic we should discuss is collateral. Collateral is like I mentioned before at the beginning of this video, you have to have some coins in your wallet that you should have as collateral that you could get the contracts. If you will not have enough of them, you will not get any contracts and you will not be able to earn any money. Why you need that? You need that, that you would be responsible for the data you will get in your hard disk so that you would not take it. Of course, it's encrypted and so on, but that you would not turn off your computer and that the client would be able to access the data at all the time. So like I said, uptime should be around 
95%. So only 5% like for some kind of server maintenance or some other procedure stuff would be for your like your downtime, no more than 5%. So that is really important. So now, yeah, like I said, uh, we need some collateral. So let's take at the official website what they say about the collateral. If we go to the documentation page and to the tab storage provide collateral, we will see the information for the collateral we have to set up in our configuration. So as for example, if we take that we will have a 10 SCP pricing for terabyte for one month, we will need 60 SCP for the terabyte. So basically how it's counted, if you have a pricing for the 10 SCP, you will need 20 SCP for one month. And if you set up in your settings that you accept contracts for three months, that means you should have three times more. So it means one month 20 SCP times three, it's 60 SCP that you would need to have in your wallet to receive the contracts and that you would receive 10 SCP coins per month for one terabyte. Also, some things to remember, you do not need to cover the collateral for your entire capacity right away. So if you're just starting, you can have less collateral, less SCP coins in your wallet, and it will be just fine. Just if you, if all of your collateral will be used, you will not receive any new contracts until you have more collateral in your wallet. So for example, you have more space but less coins co collateral for your space. That means that you will not get new contracts until you transfer more coins or they will be transferred for your space sharing well, revenue in your wallet. So keep that in mind. But yeah, like it's written here, you don't need to have a full amount of a collateral right away because most likely you will not get uh, your space fully used right away. So that's kind of fine. You can transfer some coins and later on you can transfer some more. But in my case, well, the price is still increasing and it's increasing rapidly. So I would recommend you to buy the collateral for all the space you're planning to share because later on most likely it will be more expensive. And also you will get your collateral back at the end of the storage contract, assuming your provider stayed online for the duration of the contract. And here we have some more examples how to count the collateral correctly. To start sharing your space, you will need to have some SCP coins. And at the moment, uh, the most trusted exchange to get the SCP coins is South Exchange. So I have some coins in, in there already. If you need some more information how to set up, well, actually the setup uh, for the account for the South, South Exchange is really similar to the other exchanges. So it's nothing too much exceptional, but if you need that information, let me know, I can create a video. So basically I have some coins in my South Exchange account. So let's try to transfer some coins to our wallet and see, let's see how it works. What steps you have to take to transfer the coins. Log in to your South Exchange account and select SCP for the coin. And then you should see how many of the coins you have in total, which you can transfer. As we have this information, let's press on withdrawal. And in here we should type the destination, the wallet address we got before. Let's go to our server. This is the public wallet address we should use to get our coins. So let's copy this address. Let's get back to our exchange and let's paste the address. For the beginning, as usual, I would recommend you to send one coin to see if everything is okay and that it will reach your wallet. And of course, two-factor authentication, well, you should set up it everywhere where you can. So in my case, I have it as well. If I send just one, some gas fees will be declined for the coin and then I will get less than one coin. So in this case, let's type 1.001 so that I would get round nice one coin in my wallet. We can see that one coin 
will be sent to the address. Let's type two factor authentication code and let's press withdrawal. You will get a notification that you are about to withdraw one SCP coin. You should check the wallet address. If it's correct, at least some digits, well, everything might be hard to check, but at least check some parts like beginning, the ends, some, something in the middle, if it's the correct wallet address. And once you're totally sure that everything is okay, press yes. So in this exchange, you will have to approve the transfer by pressing the link on the email. Once you press on the link, you will get the message that it was a success and withdrawal has been initiated successfully. Let's get back to our server and let's see if we can see any more information about this transfer. Right away, we can see that there is unconfirmed delta one SCP. And that means that one coin is being transferred to our wallet and it will reach the wallet soon. As with other blockchains, the transfer has to be approved by the block. So you will have to wait a little bit until the coins are fully transferred to your wallet, but it should not take long, like 10 minutes or something like that. And your coin will be in here. Uh, once you see that you have some unconfirmed delta, that means that everything most likely will be okay and the, that the coins are on the way to your wallet. Some time has passed and we can see that confirmed balance is one SCP. So that means that our coin was transferred successfully and we have it in our wallet. To finish everything set up, we have to type some settings and some configuration for our node. We can call it like this. I'm actually not sure how to even call it. I have all these commands on the notepad and I will leave them in the description below. But basically you have to set up the duration. So in this case it's 13 weeks, then collateral, then minimal storage price. So the price you're sharing with your collateral, then you can set up some download bandwidth price, collateral budget and max collateral for the price. So basically you just need to paste or type everything by hand. In my case, I'm not a fan of typing everything by hand. So I have everything copied, like created on this notepad file and I will leave these comments in the description field. So you can just copy them and use them. Of course, all these comments are on their website as well, but it's more convenient to have it like this, like set up my price, my configuration and so on. So that's why I I have copied them before and now I'm just copying them and pasting them in this command prompt window. Uh, also, you will get the message saying could not get host score estimate, failed to get reader response, get request error, cannot call host estimate score and timeouts message. So that is totally fine. Even the creators have said that, well, they know about this and this message is being shown, but it's totally okay and nothing bad is going on that you see this message. So once you see the configuration is okay, you have typed the settings, you have the coins in your wallet, you have to go to declare that you are ready to accept the contracts. So just type the command SCP host announce, then your IP address or your like DNS and the port. In this case, it's 4282. Actually, I have made a mistake in here. And just later on, I find out that I have made the mistake. <sighs> Great. And that's almost all. Everything is set up everything, all configuration settings are in place and we are live. Like I said just a couple moments ago, I have typed a wrong mm, port number, but I have fixed this before, just I did not record it the screen. But once you set up all the configuration and once you send the information to the server that your host is announced, you should see it publicly and you should start receiving the contracts. So now let's go to their website and let's see if we can see our host 
our server available. So let's go to the resources from ccprime.me website. Let's select storage provider list. We will get the information. Oh, actually in this case, looks like there is some kind of error because we are migrating to the new server. In the Discord channel, which is really very active, we can see that there is another link to get the information. Great, so let's try to use this link. Yes, and there is the information that we are moving away from, from Grafana, which we, we are using right now for the network provider list to show everything else and which uses too much resources, as I can see, as I saw the information. So that's why not everything is working smoothly and fast as it's expected. But there is another link, primehub.ocpools.com. So let's go using this link. If you press on the latest 10 hosts, we can see that we have our data friendly showing in the list. Of course, in this couple of seconds, more hosts were added as well. So it will not stay in here very long, but you can go to all host or active hosts and use the search, find your host. And here we can see that we have 2.2 terabytes of space. Actually, it should be just two, but maybe we will fix that in, in the future. The score is quite low now, but yeah, I just started, so everything is fine. And the price is 10 SEP. So it's more like an average. We have 10, we have 9 in some cases. You should check this table from time to time to see if your pricing is good. So let's press on the view and let's see the detailed information. It's quite empty now. Just the basic information as I have just started and I did not receive any contracts or anything like that. And the data is just being started to collect. So not much of information to see in here. Let's go to the main site, the provider list looks like it's working now and yeah so in this case let's try to use the search we have information addresses country how much of space is being provided if reports are okay and when the scan the last successful scan was done let's filter and let's find our host data friendly it finds it right away let's press ok here it is. In the list we can see this and we can see yeah, the version, the gigabytes, used space, not so much, just a little bit, one contract or maybe half of a contract, I'm not sure. Well, yeah, maybe one small contract is in there. Yeah, and everything else looks fine. We can see that ports are fine and scanned 21 minutes ago. Let's go inside. In here everything looks slightly different, more user friendly and we can see again more or less the same information, just maybe a little bit more of that information. So as I started everything not so long ago, we don't have like how much of the coins we have earned before, like last month and so on, because one month did not passed yet. And we have the settings, our pricing and all our settings below, like contract parameters, which unfortunately everybody can see at the moment if we know your IP or if we just randomly press on some of the providers, which is good and which is bad. Okay, now let's try to add more space and let's see if it's an easy process or you have to take some additional steps. So I have just created another folder, the same name, just with the number two, we can see that the first one has like those two folders created and this new one is empty at the moment. So I have just created and of course I have compressed it. Let's type that command to add a new folder. Let's use the commands I have used before with the arrow keys. I can go through the commands I have used. So it's really convenient. Of course, I have everything copied the comments on the notepad and in the description of the video you can use as well. So let's just go to the settings I have used before. Here is the folder name I have added. So yeah, everything is the same. Just let's add number two at the end. Space is the same. Let's press enter and we can see that folder was added and two new files were created right away. One is like before a couple of kilobytes and another one is two terabytes of the size. So looks like it was added successfully without any issues. You just configure the parameter and it will be updated. If we go to our provider list, new configuration parameters were taken and we can see that we have four instead of two terabytes available to store some files. So this video was longer, but yeah, there are many steps and many things you should know while configuring it. It's not that easy. Of course, if you don't want to go through all this process, 
actually when you know it's not that hard and now that I made this video if you watch it carefully through all the steps it's really not that hard to do all these settings so if you know the steps you can do it but if you don't want of course you should get that just the minor we are providing is as well just you will need to wait a little bit until you can get that minor and of course uh, you have to like pay a little bit more but you will get that in scp coin so that's kind of win-win and that's totally okay so yeah if you don't want to go through this all the configuration you can get the minor and everything will be set up in there you just plug and play basically just press the button and you will start getting the, the coins but if you want to do the configuration on your machine on your windows computer of course you, you should have a separate computer or some kind of mini windows machine that you could add the drives because it should be running all the time and it's you should not use it on your like uh, computer you're using for the work that you are turning it off and so on so you should have a dedicated server that's that's running 24 7 and that the files the space would be available for the clients that will be storing the files on your device on your computer on your server so i hope this was useful please let me know if you have any questions about this one or maybe if i should do some updates some changes or something is not clear in this process i have done uh, yeah so i can make maybe i can i can answer you in the comments or i can make a separate video it, it depends so i hope this was useful please hit that like button please let me know if you like it if you if it was useful for you if if it was useful for you it would be great if you could last a comment and saying like thanks or something like that i would be really grateful for that and yeah that's it for now please check the other video i have i have made about cc prime about why i think this is like a project that's gonna earn you some money i will leave the link in the description or in the right top corner so you can check it as well and yeah leave your comments leave your thoughts about the cc prime project as well because i'm really curious what you think about it as well if you're configuring uh, the computer the machine like i did like windows or maybe linux or maybe uh, raspberry p or, or you just get the minor or you're waiting or you already got the minor who many options so uh, share your thoughts share your comments I, I really would love to have some discussion about this because yeah comments are really interesting and it's really it's always nice to discuss and to share some information so thank you for watching i hope it was useful and until the next time cheers if you're here you probably already know about cc prime project or blockchain or network or i will repeat this Ta -da! well poor poor what poor were. so yeah oh crap i have a, a black screen great okay great i hope you understood what i just said because i i understood because i know what i just said but i hope you did as well Turned to the other contracts <laughs> contract Finito, finished. How long it took to record this video? Not comparing the time to record the video I have recorded before and editing it. Now it's two hours, two hours talking to the camera and showing the screen. Whew. That's a lot of time. Now I'm gonna I think I will need another like five to six, seven or eight hours to edit this video because that's a long video. Whew, that's a lot of work. But I hope it was useful. Great.